Welcome to Everyday Life. And uh, this morning we're talking matters health as it should be every Wednesday here on Everyday Life. Uh, and I, I must mention, uh, the budget was read not so long ago on the 8th of uh, this month. And uh, we want to look at whether the budget, of course, under the health sector is looking at the priorities uh, areas that should be addressed. Uh, I have a big document here that it should be the budget framework. Uh, what's the budget framework for uh, this financial year? It has a lot of pages, about 41 pages on the health sector. We'll try and do that in a very, very few minutes, looking at whether the money is going in the right places. With me this morning, uh, Professor Freddy Sengoba. Freddy Sengoba is uh, from the School of Public Health at Macquarie University. He's Associate Professor uh, Health Systems Management and also Chair of the Department of Health Policy Planning and Management. Professor, thank you for joining us. And with Professor Dr. Loja Senyonjo, Macquarie University School of Public Health too, but also Project Manager Speed project. Uh, Dr. Iproli will share with us what exactly the speed project is about. But let me begin with you, Freddie. Uh, uh, Prof, 1.8 trillion last financial year. You still have 1.8 trillion, but you have less, about you know, 3 billion less um, this financial year. When you look at the health budget in totality, um, does it still address the core areas of concern um, for, the, for you, you know, the specialists in the health sector. Yes, thank you very much uh, for that question. I think uh, in general, I must say health is among the top five sectors that are taking the the the, the lion's share. I, I share. must mention yes. that, yes. by the way, it's I think yes. among the top four. <coughs> yes. uh, and what's so interesting again about yes. the top four ministries yes. is that they're yes. all under women. Uh, that, that took the Absolutely. 50 percent of the budget. <laughs> I mean, maybe a word <laughs> of confidence for, yes. for, for women management yes. in the, in the yes. sector. Go ahead. But so, as I say, uh, so it's among the, the the top four that are taking a big share. So, as a health, of course, we would love to appreciate government for that priority. But in general, as you understand, uh, health of Ugandans right now, the health sector and government has pledged to provide services to the entire. Ugandans, basically the goal is to ensure that every Ugandan enjoys good health and uh, basically is getting the services that they, uh, they deserve mm. or they require. Mm. So that is a big ambitious goal. Mm. And I don't think that in, a, in its resource reserve right now or revenues, we can actually guarantee Ugandans that goal. So as much as this money is being provided, it is far short of what is required. And I think that is the tension we are having as public health advocates and uh, experts to try to call on government and say, look, we have set such big expectations. The money may not really be enough. And that's where also other friends come in. Mm. As you mm. see that budget may have mm. included mm. Uh, monies from outside yes. that we get yes. as donations. Yes. But some donations and you are one are of the most supported uh, yeah, exactly. ministries in, in, in government Absolutely. Uh, from the donor party. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you look at the health sector in totality, yeah. you see that government and the budgets on the book may actually be covering about half of what is going to be spent yeah. on health in this country. Where does the other come from? Donors come in. But households right now are footing about 40, sometimes 43. Mm. I think the last time we did a study, mm. it was about 43 to mm. 45 mm. percent. Mm. Mm of the cost of care, meaning that households also have to chip in, although government is collecting taxes from them and from business, and donors are putting in there. So, in general, the budget is, is a good in direction, but the needs are still very big, and we shall come to that. When you come to the households contributing 43%, yes. maybe I want to start there. Yes. Isn't that a fallacy? Uh, yeah. Because we have this thing called free health care. Yeah, it is definitely a is fallacy. It free? But, uh, do, do we have free health care? Do you still have free services being offered to our... But do you have any country in, in the public? world that has free health care? I, I would I, argue I, that... I, I agree. We don't I don't think there's any. But I'm <laughs> yes. wondering, in terms of when you say free health care, mm -hmm. how much is free when it comes to free health care? And how much... Uh, because if you're saying I'm contributing 43% of yeah. my health care bill, sure. uh, that for me raises a concern for somebody who is maybe um, in Karamoja yes. and has no means of livelihood, I think to put it in a context is like government itself is not the only provider of healthcare right now. Yes. We have the private sector which continues to complement government mm. really in big ways, sometimes 50-50. And when you have government not able to cover the entire mm. scope mm. and other private sector mm. uh, and, and uh, faith-based providers yes. come in, yes. those are going to charge some fees. Mm. And Ugandans keep shopping in both sectors. Mm. 
if you've been for uh, you've been covering much of what has been happening around for example drugs NMS has been in uh, in, in in tug of war with yes, finance yes. and he's already telling Ugandans they don't have enough medicines because they ca they are not well financed so how are Ugandans getting these medicines they have to get from the pocket although the the policies that the Ugandans should not pay but the realities of service provision the shortages in the system the revenue shortfalls in the system require that Household have to pay, and they actually are paying big. All right, yeah. um, <coughs> Doctor Lojas, yeah. first of all, explain to us what does the seed project do um, um, under uh, under yes under the School of Health. Uh, uh, thank thank public you so much. Uh, the School uh, of Public Health was honoured by the European Union yes. with a grant um, to support um, and advising government on health policies. Yes, and uh, this uh, endeavour is under the acronym called SPEED. Yes. But SPEED stands for Supporting Policy Engagement for Evidence-Based Decisions for Universal Health Coverage. Okay. And uh, this comes in the, um, at the time when the entire global community and Uganda set aside um, expectations around ensuring universal health coverage as uh, one of the SDG goals. So we are advising government and we work with partners in, in country and uh, international partners as well. All right. When you look at the budget this year um, for the Ministry of Health, um, and I want to highlight something uh, I noticed. You know, they set out, first of all, to try and uh, establish centers of excellence in the, uh, the Heart Institute, the sure. Cancer Institute, yeah. um, the renal care domains and diagnostic services. Do you think we're putting the money in the right places in the health sector? Uh, well, we need to first understand uh, what proportion goes into that um, uh, uh, segment of uh, centers of excellence. Yes. Because we have a tension between, um, actually you have a spectrum of services when you look at health services. You have the preventive, you have the curative, yes. you have the rehabilitative. But I would say uh, we need to uh, strike a balance because at certain time we have... Um, a big proportion of Ugandans seeking health care abroad, and that is also taking a big chunk of our budget. At the same time, we need to refocus on some key priority areas, mm. which I think um, are critical and are driving the, the, the budget, possibly uh, are weighing down on the budget. Uh, uh, issues like um, malaria, we, I think we need to invest better in preventing some of those conditions which are driving down um, or driving up the budget expenditures. I would say also the underlying uh, driver of all this demand for healthcare is the big population that we have. Mm. So investment uh, in these preventive um, er areas and the underlying drivers of needs for healthcare needs to be addressed at the same time have a balance of how to um, reduce the cost of uh, uh, tertiary care sought out, uh, out of the country. All right. Uh, Professor, let me begin at a very personal yeah. note. Mm. The last year, the president did promise that yeah. he would at least try and increase the pay sure. of medical workers right. and teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen that in this yes. year's financial yes. budget. Yeah. There's some semblance of you know, yeah. money that will be going uh, in that area. Sure. Uh, you, first of all, is the medical fraternity happy? Because we saw, we saw a strike last year yeah. that we did yeah. not want yeah. to repeat itself yeah. the same. Yeah. And, and we have heard what's going to happen in the judiciary. You, know, sure. you have the public prosecutors tomorrow will lay down their tools. Yeah. Uh, First of all, is this the beginning of a conversation you've been having for a very long time to address the issues of pay in, in the medical fraternity? Yes, uh, thanks so much for this. Um, in general, as you learned, yes, last year the, the president promised yes. to set up a circle when yes. the issues were raised about yes. raising the pay for health workers. Eventually promised to give them a small startup fund to start a circle. But that didn't really re uh, address the core issue of salaries. But it's not only salaries, actually. In my view, it is the size and the skill mix of the workforce. Mm, mm. In uh, Uganda right now, we have a big shortage, for example, of midwives. And you, as you look at the population, the population needs a lot of services from nurses and midwives. We have uh, literally a half of our population is uh, either giving uh, birth or is full of children that needs a lot of care, mm. immunization, they are going to get sick of pneumonia. They are going to need the uh, uh, antenatal and delivery services. Now, that uh, per se requires that we have a big gap mm. of workers on the ground. 
Right now we are stry- struggling to use unskilled people to fill in the gaps. So even before we think about salaries, salaries are important, but we actually have a big shortage of workforce. I was uh, saddened to see that among the, fina- uh, the, the priorities that yes. are not funded, yes. uh, one of them is actually about the workforce. Mm. And it comes to about, I think, th- uh, is it about 300 billion? Yes. Which is government decided not to fund on the workforce. Uh, and I think this is key in terms of trying to achieve the goals. If you look in the health sector, mm. uh, as stated there, the, w- the first objective is to give uh, equitable yes. and safe care yes. across yes. all Uganda. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fourth one is the one you're talking about, yeah. which is looking at central regional competitiveness for yes. Uganda's healthcare industry. Yes, but mm-hmm. before we get to regional competitiveness, before <laughs> we get to sell our services outside, yes. we are not able to satisfy local demand internally here, and we really need to pay attention mm-hmm. to that. So mm-hmm. I think that um, uh, on that issue of uh, uh, salaries, we still have low-paid workers, but also we have very few of them. So if we are to add the two. Mm. Actually, the, the, the gap that is there, that is not funded, is a very small gap. It should be much larger if we are able to look at filling all the health work posts that is there and if we are to cater for the growth, because the po- population is growing every day. Yes. And uh, every year we add um, a quarter of a million to Ugandans. And this quarter we add is mostly of young people who need more care. So we are going to be spending big in that area and government needs to ideally plan first of all to control the population if, if they are to reduce the burden on the budget otherwise they should plan for a higher budget increase which we may not be able to achieve which means we have to settle for getting a half a glass <laughs> the, the president even yeah. when he met you he he, yeah. he requested that and he this was his public health yeah, crisis yeah. if you can help him with the preventable diseases sure how can you bring down the cost uh-huh. of management of preventable diseases exactly. for him to be able to then pick that money and divert it Absolutely. into um uh-huh facilitating the well-being exactly. of the medical workers. I think on is that, that an area we want to invest in? Very much. Uh, the president is on, uh, or is put, put his finger on, on, on the actual problem. Yes. We actually currently, when you look at what we are financing, you'll find that other than immunization and uh, I think there is not much preventive services we are investing in. Most of it is treating illnesses which of course we have to do, but much of these illnesses can be prevented. I like his message during the campaigns. He actually went out with a crafted message around prevention and also recently the national drug stores is also beginning to reinforce that message that we can't pro- provide enough medicines for all diseases. Please let's pay attention to how we reduce them. That is, requires investment. But when you look at the budget right now, we are still struggling with treating those that are getting sick. We haven't invested in the well-being of Ugandans. I was looking to look at the budget. If yes. you have 1.8 billion, yes. a trillion, yes. ideally every Ugandan according to current population, we are getting about 50,000 a year to keep you healthy. My God. So 50,000, what can you get? A dose of coatem if you went in pre- is about 30,000. Yes. Wow. So ideally you're almost finishing it. Of that, the medicine is almost 1,000 per Ugandan. What medicine can you particularly buy? So, and if you go down to check on the preventive uh, programs in government business, you may find about 50, 60 shillings mm. have been allocated. Mm. Meaning that there is very little investment in these areas. Look at malaria. Malaria actually is taking a big burden on the economy. Many people don't turn up to work because they are sick. Children don't get to study well because they are sick. Yes. Their brains can't work, Bl- yes. uh, blood is not enough. Basically, ill health g- around malaria is too much. But look at how many districts are getting the most effective intervention. These tend to be, people are talking these days of mosquito nets, yes. but I'll tell you many people are not using the nets effectively. But the most effective when the net is put on the wall meaning spraying inside the house. That one is in about 10, 15 districts only out of 120. And even in those, they're trying to scale down. When they scaled uh, that down in northern Uganda, we saw a big epidemic uh, two years ago. Yes. So you can see that the, first, the most effective interventions to help reduce the burden on the budget are actually not invested. And for me, that is where we have a big challenge. Uh, the president needs to really rein in the, and of course the technical people need to start 
putting their money in a way that will mm. save the economy mm. Mm. other than asking always the for more and more money i think we definitely need the more money but what we have is not being put where we should be expecting more benefits uh, dr logers I, I see another key you know uh, objective for this this financial year would be to address key uh, the determinants uh, of health through strengthening inter uh, sectoral collaboration and partnerships how how important is this for the health sector I, I think it is very important, especially in light of the fact that we don't have, um, we may not raise that enough uh, resources required to fund the health sector. Yes. And we acknowledge that health is a, a complex um, uh, product which is contributed to by where people live, where people work, um, their age, where they grow up, and that is a concept of social determinants of mm, health. Mm. That where people live, where they grow up, in a way influences their well-being. Mm. So we look at a country where you have different sectors. Uh, government has been uh, divide, compartmentalized into sectors. You have the roads, you have the housing, and those. And you know that housing, for example, has a big um, uh, co contribution. People in slums are likely to f have certain diseases. Yes, yes. Them. So the concept of uh, social determinants of health uh, brings the f uh, to, to the fact that we need to reach out to other sectors within government. Government sectors need to speak to each other mm -hmm. and say, how mm -hmm. do we make a contribution I to If we are going to put a road in this place, uh, how do we address the issues of mm -hmm. infrastructure in this area yeah. that okay. will not affect you know, yeah. the, 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 the wetlands in this area that oh. then turn, may turn around to actually be a breeding mm -hmm. space for malaria? But a good yeah. example yeah. is the recent one that has yeah. been in the news. Yes. Fika Salama yes, is a good yes, example. Yes, there used to be a lot of death on that road yes. because of road traffic accident. And after that operation, literally after six months, there were literally no death on that road. But there was no health money spent on that intervention called Fika Salam. Police budget was leveraged. Uh, uh, the, the judiciary, yes. because they were fining people yes. and yes. putting them into jail. The road in. sector budget was leveraged because yes. the road authority was well, there. Yes. Um, when you look at it, that intervention saved many lives. But there was no health budget. Meaning that other budgets in other sectors could be brought to help improve health. Mm. And if you go to water, is a big contribution there. The more safe water we make available, we the get better for our communities. Better for our communities. So the more we, we open <coughs> up in the communities and provide clean yeah, uh, exactly. water, but so, it's not so just investment clean, but in other areas, are affordable. Investment in those other sectors can also be leveraged to improve health. Right. And that's where the Minister of Health is right to say they need to leverage and to have this collaboration with other sectors yes. to improve Yes, sorry, I cut you short. Mm -hmm. Yes, in terms of housing, I totally understand where you're coming mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure in terms of prevalence, mm -hmm. you have high prevalence rates in, mm -hmm. in, in slum communities yeah. compared to the you know, well-developed you know, uh, estate communities mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you know, matters of health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, what I would say that uh, mm -hmm. sometimes we, we used to say in medical school that diseases uh, uh, read geography. <laughs> 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 that in, you find that certain groups of people uh, get affected by certain conditions. But the entire understanding that health is contributed to by where people live, work, and no, not necessarily uh, when they get to the health facility is what is important in that. And then what comes to, 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 uh, to, to my to question is how do these sectors start to speak to mm -hmm. each other? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it, the health sector does not have the mandate to convene other sectors. That's where supra uh, agencies like the National Planning Authority come in where the OPM uh, Office of the Prime Minister should come and help coordinate these efforts. But also I think this requires um, structured dialogue and uh, maybe facilitated dialogue <laughs> within the different sectors because you are likely to have a sense of mandates clashing or mandates um, um, competing, uh, competing for, for the same resources mm. as you see as we mm. talk about the budget. Mm. Every mm. sector is saying what are we having out of this. Mm. So un uh, until we appreciate that health is... Um, is a national agenda, so every sector has a role to play. But also what is important is for other sectors to appreciate that health, by people being healthy, they also contribute to the other sectors. When people are healthy, they are likely to be more productive, the labor industry is likely to benefit from all this, but also there are other businesses which are likely to, or other sectors which are likely to benefit from people staying healthy. So we need to recognize that mutual uh, be benefit that comes from keeping people healthy and see how we can leverage investments from other sectors which may not necessarily
be in the health budget. Professor, we continuously depend on government to provide solutions in the health sure, sector. Sure. And, and, you know, they will, you know, take this, this 1.8 trillion, uh, you know, uh, yeah. budget and finance it. But yeah. we know that, you and I know that we probably mm -hmm. need twice as much money sure. to run the health sector. Yeah. So, and the partners will not give you the same amount of money sure. the government is putting, you know, uh, aside for this year. Yeah. However, mm. there's been ideas around financing of the health sector, which include insurance. Sure. So you have maybe what, 1, 2%, 2, 3% 2, mm. insured, you yeah. know, on private arrangements. Sure. Where is this discussion on public health insurance? Yes. It is actually very high on the agenda within the sector, but also within government, yes. and uh, as I read, within the media. Um, my personal take has been that um, we have, we, we may raise more expectations than we're able to deliver through insurance, but insurance is part and parcel of what we should be looking at long term, and I want to emphasize the word long term. Because in the short term, we have literally about 10% people who are employed. Yes. And that, according to the current structure of the insurance that is being discussed, is looking to start with those. That 10% may not really be able to leverage what we need in terms of monies. And even though that 10% is already putting money already in health, it's just a matter of channeling it to a new direction. But in the long term, we really need insurance that brings particularly the poor people first in the queue. Now, the challenge with insurance is that they rarely want us to start with poor people. And in Uganda, we have such a big population of people who are not on pay, or in other words, the payroll, which you can... They're in the informal sector. Yes. We can't... People uh, in the informal sector to collect money so hard that yes. even the government had to run away from the yes. other taxation. The graduation, ta graduation, graduation tax. Ta yeah, yes. because yeah. it is hard to collect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, as you go into insurance, you are saying we should go and run uh, around... Looking for these Looking people. for these people. It will be more expensive money. to actually... It will be very expensive to collect. But also look at the provider side of things. How ready are we? If you went now and uh, told, let's say, people in... Uh, in the West Nile sub-region and said we started insurance, are the providers there on the ground? Are they even aware of what to charge? Do they have the workforce to deliver? You know, the moment I take your money, your voice should sit over course. the roof. The reason we are not actually yes. demanding for service delivery is that we are not contributing. Yeah, exactly. uh, the exactly. people in the informal sector who are the yeah. largest population yeah, are not yeah, contributing yeah. to this, exactly. uh, this basket. Absolutely. So they don't have any voice. So that voice issue is that... Um, we should make the system ready, first of all, to deliver satisfactory care. Mm. What we see among countries that have gone ahead of us in this insurance is strikes after strikes after strikes. Go to Ghana, go our neighbor Kenya. The, the issue is that the supply side of things takes 20, 30 years to get ready. Now, we do wait until it is ready, maybe not, but what is it that we can promise people? So that when you start taking uh, this insurance, yes. people don't start to expect that the system all of a sudden has become like UK or, <laughs> or whatever. You can walk into a health yes. institution and say something. We must conclude this conversation. Yeah. However, I wanted us to discuss, uh, mm. I, I mean, I saw 1,200 health workers applying. Okay, more than 1,200. But I saw a need for 1,200 worker, health workers in Libya. Yep, yes. And my concern was immediately was, oh my God. So we're going to lose another 1,200 people in sure. this current health sector. Sure. That, that for me mm -hmm. is the biggest crisis we have. And I agree with you. When yeah. it's issues of skilling mm -hmm. and the right personnel uh, mm -hmm. to have. How much mm -hmm. are we doing to facilitate uh, the ginger mi you know, midwife school you know, uh, and, and maybe Kabare and others? How much are we doing to invest in skilling our young people, in uh, retooling our health workers and, and nurses sure. and midwives to be actually the region's best as we market ourselves to be marketable in the region sure, sure. in matters of health? Mm. How, how much are we putting you know, in that area? Have you looked through this yes. budget and seen that you know, there's missing links in that space? In this budget, but let me also say generally government policy, uh, government has walked away from training health workers over the years for actually not just over the years for almost two three decades meaning that much of the training is now done by private institutions although government still has some schools those schools you find that they are running basically on donor support for a long time 
and many of them have been uh, uh, most of the staff have literally been pushed away into mm -hmm. other areas mm -hmm. they are struggling to hold on staff so the actual capacity of this school is being propped up through donor support government is bringing in the partners but we are not yet able to produce enough of especially certain skills mm. there are mm. some areas where we are not doing very well look at the whole diagnostic area mm. laboratory technicians anesthetists midwives are very few but also we've been very wasteful we started uh, in 2001 to, to to a new program which we called comprehensive nursing but over time government basically walked off after now it's almost 15 years down the road or coming to 20 he walked off this program, and the people who have been trained have literally been trying to find their way into the private sector because public sector rejected them. And this is a waste. Over 23,000 people were trained over the years, meaning that we are also not so doing so well in terms of being uh, using our policies, but also we are not doing so well in putting money into development. But just to say that uh, as we train, currently we have a lot of private schools that have set up, which is a good thing. We need to see that their quality is good. We need to see that they are training in the right environment. Um, but in my view, unless we are able to get those people into the system, retain them there, motivate them, supply them with what is required, it's not enough to... It's basically a whole package. Mm -hmm. And the uh, government needs to start looking at this as a package, I think, if we are to improve. Yes. Okay. Doctor, maybe, quickly. Yes. Maybe the final point I would say around there is that still this requires different sectors of government to speak to each other. Because your public service, which uh, determines uh, the, sc the scope of, um, um, uh, of, of service, but also your finance, which has to allocate these funds. And also means of education, is charge of, which is in charge of education. See, when you talk about intersectoral action, that comes to, 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 to bear mm, yes, it yes, at this yes, point. Yes. Let's reserve to speak to each other. All right, Doctor. Thank you very much, Dr. Lozja Senyonjo and uh, Professor Freddy Sengoba for helping us understand you know, the areas, key areas of budget, for the budget support in the health sector. Uh, it is a discussion that is ongoing, and I, I, we will invite Professor uh, Sengoba back to continue this discussion on our priorities in the health sector and, how, and whether we are aligning our national development you know, plan in terms of policy with the budget and the money we are allocating to the key uh, health sector uh, projects and of course um, you know the support areas that need to be given the necessary uh, finances to develop our health sector that and much more in another time when we discuss matters of health here on uh, everyday life